This is going to finish up Proverbs chapter 1. And we're going to look at three things that put you on the wrong path. And the first thing is not listening to your parents. In Proverbs 1, 8 through 9, it says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. So the reason the Lord gives you parents is because you are foolish. Proverbs twenty two fifteen says, Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. So the Lord is so serious about you honoring your parents that he will reward you with long life just for doing so. As it says in Exodus 20 in verse 12, Honor thy father and thy mother, that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3 Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. So you see through the Bible, the Lord giving you instruction to honor your parents, listen to what your parents say. And there's sure there is a lot of parents that will tell you to do bad things, but for the most part, as a general rule, your parents know more than you do. They're wiser than you are. And they're there to guide you. Because you're a fool. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. If you're a, a kid listening to this, if you want to have a long life, listen to your parents. It says there in Proverbs 1.8, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace into thy head and chains about thy neck. So that's a clear commandment in the Bible. And that's the first place that you're going to go wrong. You're going to disobey your parents. You're going to do something that they told you that you shouldn't do. And that's when trouble starts. And the next one is hanging with the wrong crowd. In Proverbs 1.10, it says, My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. So there are going to be men who try to get you to sin because men don't like to sin alone. The only person who can stand around to be a drunk is another drunk. That's why they want you to get drunk. Proverbs 111, if they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us look privily for the innocent without cause. Notice they like privily for the innocent. Men want something for nothing. They don't want to go to work and make something of themselves. They want to take it from men who have the decency to go to work. So they lurk privily for the innocent. And they say in verse 12, Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. There's a story about a man named Korah in the Old Testament who got swallowed up alive by the earth in the book of Numbers. He went down alive into the pit. That's what this reminds me of. And that's what these people want to swallow you up as. As the grave. They want to swallow you up whole as those that go down into the pit. Yet they're going to be the ones that end up going down into the pit. They say in verse 13, We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. So they have their affection on things down here. They're worried about filling their houses with the material things of this world, things that they've taken. And hanging around these type of people, these sinners, is one of the things that will hurt your Christian fellowship and put you down the wrong path quicker than anything. Be careful who you follow because you will follow them down the wrong road. Exodus 23.2 says, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. No matter how many people... No matter how popular they are, you don't want to follow a multitude to do evil. Even if you're the only one left that's not doing it, always do right. Just like, greatest example, Noah. One of the only righteous men, just him, out of all, all the world, and he did right. 1 Corinthians 15, 33, Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. 
2 Corinthians 6.14, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? If you're a Christian, then you're light. Don't be around darkness. If you're a Christian, then you're righteous. Don't hang around those that are unrighteous. Don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. 1 Kings 11, 1 through 2. You know about King Solomon. He loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, the Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you. Now listen to this, for surely they will turn away your heart after other gods. And Solomon clave unto these in love, and that's where he got in trouble. These people turned away his heart after other gods. And that's what will happen if you hang around sinners. If you hang around people that entice you. That's why it says here in Proverbs 1 and verse 10, My son, if sinners entice thee, Consent thou not. If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for blood, let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. That's the peer pressure. That's them trying to pressure you into doing something that you shouldn't because they don't want to do it by themselves. People don't like to do evil alone. So they say in verse 12, Let us swallow them up alive as the grave, and whole and whole as those that go down into the pit. See, these people are premeditating the evil they're going to do, and they want you to be involved. So they say, we shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. They've always got something that they're going to try to attract you with to do the evil thing. Just like the devil when he approached Eve. He said, you know, eat the fruit, you'll become as gods. But the end thereof of these things is the ways of death. In Nehemiah 13, 26, it says, Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him, who was beloved of his God, and God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. So even King Solomon, the man who wrote Proverbs himself, got around the wrong people and ended up having his heart turned away from the Lord God. So what makes you any different? Do you think you're wiser than King Solomon? Ephesians 5.11, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. That stuff you see on YouTube on the trending page, that is the unfruitful works of darkness. You see these music videos that have like 10 million views in one day, and it's straight filth. That is nothing but one musician or rapper or devil in the flesh using music to lead millions of people down the wrong path. That is the unfruitful works of darkness. But the, an, another thing that's going to put you on the wrong path is setting your affection on the things of this world. In verse 14, another thing these wicked people say is, Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. And that is what a one-world government will seek to do, a one-world monetary system, a system where everywhere you go, everyone pays for things and buys for things the same way, with a mark in your forehead or in your hand. But sinners who don't have their affection on things above will try to get you to be crooked with them. They will make you think that you will also benefit from the devilment they're about to do. They will say, let us all have one purse. So if you help them rob someone, they will give you half the money, they say. But if they would rob someone, then they would also rob you. They would kill you and take half if they needed it. If they will steal you, steal with you, then they will end up stealing from you. Proverbs 1.15 My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. So their road leads to destruction. Evil, sin, death, and hell. Uh, 
Verse 16, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. They don't care about anybody but themselves. That's one of the six things the Lord hates, is hands that shed innocent blood. As it says in Proverbs six seventeen, Why do abortion doctors shed the blood of babies? It's because their affection is on the things of this world. Proverbs 1, 17, Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. If a bird sees the net that you're going to catch him with, then you set it in vain. And you, as a person, should have enough sense to know what these wicked men, when they're spreading a net for you, surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. You ought to know, when you hear what they're asking you to do, that they're just spreading a net for you. Proverbs 118, and they lay wait for their own blood. They lay priv privily for their own lives. Notice that. They lay wait for their own blood and their own lives. Wicked men who steal, kill, and destroy are only laying wait for their own blood and their own lives because you reap what you sow. Pharaoh wanted to kill babies. He ended up with his firstborn dead. Haman wanted to hang Mordecai, and he ended up getting hanged. Saul tried to kill David, and he ended up killing himself. They lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. Verse 19, So are the ways of every one that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. So the reason men steal and take from people is because they have their affection on the things of this world. But the Bible says in Colossians 3, 2, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. It says in Matthew 6, 19, 20, Lay down now up for yourself treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. So men are infatuated with material things and money. That's why 1 Timothy 6.10 says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The more money you have, usually the more sorrow you're going to have. And that's what people are wanting. Pretty much all the evil things you see going on, it's because people are wanting money. This is why men make merchandise of you. All these TV preachers making merchandise of people, they are greedy of gain and they love money. As it says in 2 Peter 2, 3, And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. So why do men steal and kill and hurt other men? It's mostly for money, material possessions. They have their affection on the things of this world. And that is the wrong path to be on. So, what are three, just three quick things to keep you from going on the wrong path is listen to your parents, set your affection on things above, don't hang out with the wrong crowd. If you just quit doing these, if you start listening to your parents, start hanging out with people you should and start setting your affection on eternity, on heaven, then you're going to turn out a lot better. But if you don't do these three things, you're just going to continue down the path of destruction. And many people will lead you down that path. But this has been chapter one of the book of Proverbs.